This is the um, lecture on your special senses. Um, we talked about your sensory receptors in your skin when we talked about the intake emissary system. So those are your normal senses, um, but now we're gonna talk about your special senses. So that's gonna be um, the sense of smell, vision, auditory, and taste. So the first one we're talking about is smell. Um, when you are smelling something, you're actually taking, there's um, particles that enter the air and they're being received by your receptors in the nasal cavity. So um, your olfactory receptors, that's what these are right here, almost looks like a brush. Um, there's thousands occupy the roof of each nasal cavity, as you know, you have two. Um, the neurons equipped with olfactory hairs, bathed by mucus, secreted by glands. <coughs> so um, this is your olfactory bulb here, um, and these are your olfactory receptors. And when the molecule comes in, it's going to be sensed by these, essentially. And this kind of says that. So the odor molecule would come in, um, the receptor cell would sense that, um, it would go to the bulb, so the cells into the bulb, um, down the tract and into the limbic system, which is the part of the brain um, for memory, learning, appetite, and cravings, right? Saying, oh, um, I know that's pizza, right? And then uh, instantly your body gets a little bit hungry just because of the memory and it, and it kicks in your appetite and cravings. Um, so the second one is taste. Um, you have taste buds on your tongue. Uh, specific receptors for sense of taste are scattered in the oral cavity. So this is what, it, I think they're very beautiful. You ever see a real picture? Um, it looks like this, it, they're called basal cells, but they're beautiful in an electron microscope. Uh, we have five, um, some people think it's four, but we actually have five um, different taste sensations. Um, only slight differences in locations of taste receptors. Most buds respond to multiple tastes. So each of these buds, uh, they, there used to be a myth that different parts of your tongue have different tastes, but really the bulbs um, sort of all kind of do the same thing. So you have sweet, so that's recognizing your sugars and your amino acids. Sour, essentially what those buds are detecting are hydrogen ions or acidic. Um, bitter are alkaloids, salty or metal ions, and umami is an amino acid given off by beef, um, which is glutaminate. Um, it gives it that beef taste to it. So what cranial nerves are activated for taste? You have facial, glossopharyngeal that moves the tongue, and vagus because it actually connects to um, the stomach, right? Because the taste will, act, will activate, um, it will, as soon as something hits your mouth, it's going to trigger the vagus nerve and your stomach actually starts to digest and process. It starts secreting the acids needed to break down the food. Okay, so now we're really into it. Those um, other two very basic things, mostly about the function. Now you're really gonna have to know about the structures as well. So we're gonna get into hearing and balance. Um, hearing and balance go together. Um, if you've ever had water in your ears, um, you may got really dizzy. That happened to me once. Um, I got really dizzy and sick to my stomach after I went to a water park, and it was because I got water in this region, and it messed with the middle bones of the ear, um, so it took off my balance. So just so you know, hearing and balance go together. So first of all, the external ear. So we're going to talk all about externally. Um, you have the oracle or pina. This, that's the... Um, that's the cartilage that's on the outside of the body. Um, so it's the most superficial of all the structures. Um, it's, its structure is meant to make the waves come in in a more efficient manner. Um, you have the external acoustic meatus. That's just the auditory canal. Usually that's what you're going to hear it called, the auditory canal, but just make sure you know the meatus as well. Um, the most important thing, this is where you can find their eracs, so the ceruminous glands. So you have glands in here, and it's giving off these wax. The wax is there to help protect you from bacteria um, to go into, because remember, what's on the other side of here? You have a brain in here you want to really protect. Um, the tympanic membrane, which is right here, is the eardrum. Um, that's actually part getting part into the middle ear, but when the waves come in, that's actually what's going to vibrate. So the wave, so you're the... Um, the auditory tube is made to take the waves and kind of make it more efficient and so it can hit the tympanic membrane and that vibration is going to be felt um, all the way um, into your um, auditory um, nerve um, to be able to process the information. 
So now we're in the middle ear. So in the middle ear, you have three small bones, and actually they're the smallest bones of the body, uh, which transmit vibratory motions of the eardrum. So when the eardrum is moving, um, now it's going to um, start moving the malus, and the malus will start vibrating, and that will transfer to the incus. The incus will start vibrating, and they'll go to the stapes. So sometimes you'll hear it called hammer, anvil, and stirrup. So if you're ever playing like any games or something as a name, the middle ear, and usually this is going to be your answers. This is more of the um, non-scientific term for it, but for the quiz, you know, malice, incus, and stapes. Um, you also have the pharyngotympanic tube or the auditory tube. It connects the middle ear to the throat. It helps maintain air pressure. A lot of times, if you have an upper respiratory infection, it will include the tubes of the ears. It will include the ear, unfortunately, because the bacteria will go to the ears, back to the throat. So there is a passageway called the auditory tube or the pharyngotympanic tube. So, um, so you have the... Um, here you have the auditory tube here, right? And then you had your eardrum that would vibrate. Then you have your malus, your incus, and your stapes. The stapes looks like, um, and that's why they, it looks like where um, the part of when you're like riding a horse where your foot goes in. Um, that's kind of what it looks like. The malus um, looks like a hammer. That's where they, that's where they kind of got their name of, as to what they look like. Um, so now we're in the inner ear. So that's in this picture. It's like pretty much all the blue. Um, so the the bony labyrinth is located deep within the temporal bone. Let's just say bone, not bond, behind the eye socket. So if you find your eye socket and just kind of think all the way back, that's where um, that's where this would be. So you have your semicircular canals. Okay. So this is going to be for equilibrium balance. So basically, when I have water in my ears water was here and it just it took off my equilibrium the vestibule which is right this whole structure right here oh sorry um the vestibule which is this whole structure contains the round window and the cochlea which is this nice little circle reminds me of like um, a snail um that is for hearing so that is actually inside of here if we took it if we cut it that's where all your receptors are going to be and that's very important if you want to add that in your receptors are in the cochlea and then that's going to go to your auditory nerve and that will then go to be processed by the body so the hearing mechanism i wanted to um, go into this so the sound waves reach the cochlea through vibrations of the eardrum and the ossicles so the tiny bone so the eardrum and then the tiny bones um, and then it'll reach an oval window, and um, and what's in that oval window, which is so special, is this fluid. And that fluid's going to make the inner ear start to vibrate. So the pressure waves will stimulate the organ of corti, which contain the receptors. So basically that's just inside um, of that coil um, and the hearing receptors or hair cells. Um, and then that will go to the cochlear nerve, um, and that will therefore then transfer to the vestibule cochlear. So, um, and that's just basically going to the brain. So now it's there being processed, but it all starts with a sound wave. So here's like a really nice picture. You can see the sound wave coming in. So the, the ear does a want, like the, the physiology and the anatomy of the ear is formed to make it more sufficient. It's going to hit the tympanic membrane or the eardrum and it's going to start to vibrate just like a drum. Then it would hit the malus, incus, and then the stapes. So it just like vibrates each other and it's going to get to that round window with fluid and now it's going to transmit into the organ of corti which is all part of the cochlea um, that spiral of the cochlea and that is then therefore that now now we're into the receptors and now it's in, in the nerve endings and it's going to go into the vestibular cochlear nerve <clears throat> so that one fast Okay, so now we're in vision. This is the last one. Um, so externally, so vision, like how do we see the outside world? Um, to me, this is one of the most precious and the um, the best of all of them, right? If you have great vision, it's it's wonderful. Um, so eyelids, so we're external. So eyelids are to protect the eye. Um, it's there also to make sure that it's moist, right? So like you close your eyes and you keep the moisture inside the eye so it doesn't dry up. Um, you have these muscles that are attached. You should have saw this um, in the visible body app. You have these extrinsic eye muscles and they move the eyeball. There's a gland um, if right above. So if you underneath your eyebrow, in between your eyebrow and your eyeball, you have a gland called a lacrimal gland. And it's very important, it has um, enzymes that kills bacteria. So um, 
your eyes are very important and you want a bacteria to go in there and eat your eye, eat the flesh of your eye. So that's what that's there for. They're enzymes and then specifically it's like your own antibacterial. Okay. So the outer tunic, I love this picture because you can really see the cornea. They took the cornea and they stretched it outward. Uh, that's the most superficial of the eye. Uh, it's transparent and it's there to focus light rays. So when it hits this, it focuses it into um, the opening. Uh, the sclera is white. So that's this white structure right here. It's the white part of the eye. And the optic nerve, which is the back part of it, um, it exits the optic disc and transmits visuals to the brain. So that would be, um, again, like if you remember seeing the picture, that would be back in here. Um, so now we're inside of the eye. So the first one is going to be the cord coat. It contains all your blood vessels. It's usually pink um, in a diagram. Um, the ciliary body, it holds the lens in place. Uh, it looks, you can kind of pull it out, but there, it's, it reminds me of the inside of a, you know, like a mushroom. Like if you took a mushroom, the cut mushroom cap, and you look upside down, that's what it looks like. Um, Behind that, you have the lens. So the lens is literally looks, it feels like a piece of plastic when you like feel it and you'll feel it on Thursday with the dissection. Um, but the lens is there for focusing. Uh, the iris is the colored portion of your eye. The aqueous humor surrounds the lens. So your so there's two different types of fluid, but the aqueous humor is there and it's around your lens, holding it in place essentially. And the pupil is the opening for the light to enter. So the pupil, the dark, the black of your eye is essentially a hole. It's a hole that the light goes into. So here you kind of see um, a picture. Um, so you have the cornea. That's the most external part of it. Um, and if you take that off, you would see the color part of your eye, which is the iris. The pupil is the hole. Um, this would be your ciliary body. It holds your lens in place. You'll actually take um, the lens out. Like when you cut the eye, you'll take the lens out of the ciliary body. The choroid, like I remember I told you, it's usually pink, the choroid coat. Um, we haven't got to the retina yet, but we'll get that to that in a moment. So now we're in the inner tu tunic. The retina, again, is very, very important. That's where your visual receptors are. Um, so the retina is the yellow in this diagram. So it's all, so when the light comes in, that's where you're, it's going to hit the receptors. Um, the favia centrialis is the region of the sharpest vision. Um, so uh, when you, usually it's made by like, you could tell it was like a dot um, in the region. Like it'll be like a part that sticks out. The optic disc is where the nerve fibers leave the eye and create a blind spot. So this right here would be the optic disc. Like it's just where there is a hole, right? Because that's where the nerve has to come in. So that would be like your blind spot where you can't see. Uh, the vitreous humor is all the fluid. So everything in here, this whole eye is filled with fluid. When you actually put your scalpel in to penetrate the eye, you are going to, um, the fluid is going to come out. Um, sometimes it squirts out a little bit. Um, but uh, that fluid um, is called the vitreous humor. Um, so this is a, just another um, diagram for you to see. Okay, so how does vision work? So light rays are bent or refracted as they encounter the cornea. So the cornea, which is the outermost part of the eye, bends the light. And um, not only does that, but like you have the aqueous humor that will bend at the lens and the vitreous humor. So the, all the fluid in these structures right here are gonna bend the light in a way that it's gonna hit um, what it needs to um, in order to see it. The image is formed on the retina. Um, it's actually reversed. So when it hits the retina, it's upside down um, and left to right. So everything, it's completely flipped and smaller than the object that you're seeing. The optic chiasm connects to the optic tract, um, which um, will actually end up going to your thalamus, but it'll flip it. So um, what will the image that the retina see, that retina is forming is reversed and then your brain um, flips it the right way and the right size. Uh, the, the cranial nerves, you have the optic, ocular motor, trochlear, and abducens. Um, this picture here, uh, it's really funny. So we have difficulty interpreting images that are upside down. We'll do this together on Wednesday to make you do it, but um, which one's the real Mona Lisa? And if you look at it, uh, looking at the picture, it look, they both look pretty close to the same. Um, I can tell the difference because I've seen it a million times, but if you turn your head upside down, you'll see um, how different they really are. And actually for you guys, it's nice. You can just move the iPad upside down, but it's just because the way that you're, you're, you're not very good because the way that your body flips or 
the way the retina flips the images, we're not the best at seeing objects upside down uh, because then you're really messing up your, your brain.